here for now. It has nothing to do with that. All right, I'm gonna go live, and we'll see. Okay. 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 Need like a special live countdown. I see me. You see you. Yeah. See you. You don't see me yet. No. Hi, everybody. There you are. It looks really good. <laughs> it's, like a, it's a little bit of a strange day because, um, well, it just is. But also in this live stream, we're set up so differently and the whole um, sort of vibe and presentation is very different. So bear with us. And Kyla is here via speakerphone. <laughs> so, via speakerphone. So she may or may not come through very well. Um, for you guys. We have one person saying good sound and picture quality. That's exciting. That's lovely. That's Your John. Your must be turned up, Audrey. That's all John. So I had a lot of fun preparing for today um, because I love, I love that so much of what goes into painting can be conveyed <laughs> and um, and learned. And so I, I've had a good time for my painting workshops. I already had some, a lot written, but I've gone back over that. And then we have had, uh, four or five people send pieces. Um, I'm afraid that we didn't get one, which is a bummer, but, um, maybe we can do another, um, another little live or something. But so I have several pieces here that I went over as well to talk about what we see and what we like and what um, things to consider moving forward. And I have the pieces that I've made around me. If anybody has any questions, we can take a look at those. I have things that I like about what I've done and things that I totally would do different if I were to do them again. Um, the wet felting is a little bit more a little less forgiving than the needle felting in that um, once it's all felted, you still can manipulate it. But I think if, if it's not very successful, it might weigh out to be too much work to totally try to turn it around. Like sometimes things just need to come pretty like flow and come easily. And if it gets too far away from you, just let it go. Yeah. Let it go. If it gets too far away from you, it's kind of not worth the struggle. Like, it's a little bit hard to explain, but I definitely feel that in painting. My best paintings came together in a very fluid, um, organic way. And once I start struggling with the painting, um, wanting to correct and fix, and then it, it just like just tightens up and tightens up. There are times that you can completely like set it aside, abandon, almost abandon what you've done already. like. And then you come back to it with fresh eyes and with painting, it's actually really fun to paint over something. I haven't done it so much with felting yet, but it's neat because you already have a lot of activity on the canvas and that can just add interest and make, um, make your piece really dynamic. So, um, with felting, you might just stab the heck out of it too much and then. Right, right. Yeah. Like in wet felting in particular, like the red tree, it already has like darks and lights and texture. And, and so that would be a lot to completely change. Um, but so much of painting and felting does apply. I think, I think that working 2D needle felting like I did with the hounds and the zebra um, is most like using pastels actually. Um, cause pastels, you can, you can somewhat blend colors. You can, you can layer, you can overlap. Um, but everything you put is like as pure as that pastel stick. It's just, and that's the way the wool is. And someone mentioned, um, in a conversation that she, I forget if it was a thread or our last live that she learned that, um, it's a very subtle it takes very little wool to indicate changes. And, and I'm learning that as well, definitely. Um, 
And so trying to, so my things I feel like can end up a little bold because I'm always trying to tone down and make it a little more subtle. So I have a lot to go over. And the first thing I want to do is kind of make sure we're all speaking the same language and making sure that we understand that some of what many of the terms uh, that I use will use mean. And I'm sure a lot of you know maybe all of this, but there is um, there are a lot of terms in regard to color that I want to talk about. And, um, and then I want to go over just a little bit of sort of 2D um, concepts and things to think about in composition, color, contrast, um, edges, um, things that will help you make choices both in setting up to paint, size, reference photo, um, you know, co color palette, and then making choices as you paint. So, yeah. <laughs> so I have a, um, John, I'm going to use the overhead, I think, for the both color both? wheel. Um, yeah, both for now, because I'm not totally. Okay, so I have a color wheel here. <laughs> Your earrings are great. Your necklace is fabulous, and you look particularly lovely today. Aw, thank you, Kyla. <laughs> I mean, I agree with all of those things, but I did not say them. Other people did. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, this is like a Goodwill um, men's shirt <laughs> that I'm just like, it's so soft and comfy. Um, I use complementary colors a lot. So... The color wheel is important to, to understand. They're inexpensive. There's all different kinds. This is a watercolor one that came from Jerry's Artorama. Um, and there's designer ones and probably oil painting ones and all different kinds. But they're all the same in that um, orange is always going to be opposite blue. <laughs> uh, green is always going to be opposite red. And yellow will be opposite of violet or purple. Um, and those are called complementary colors. So the primary colors are the three and blue, um, blue, red, and yellow. The secondary colors are three, green, purple, and orange. And then your tertiary colors are those blended um, with the color next to them. Color when we say color, we think um, pink, blue, but there are lots of components to colors. So hue is actually the color family. Um, intensity, also called chroma, is the saturation of the color. So whether it's thinned out, grayed out, um, you know, how pure is it? If you've edited photos, you have that bar you can slide that sort of desaturates. It's, it's like that. And then um, value is referring to the lightness or darkness the, the, um, of the color. These things, value, chroma, and hue, all three of those make a color. So infinite colors, which is so exciting for us. Um, so those are just some terms that I wanted to have under our belt because I, I will talk a lot about hue and, and chroma and value. Very important to understand. And then the other, there's a few other concepts that I wanted to go over um, just in just general things to think about. And I was contemplating how to set this up like should I have a whiteboard like <laughs> um but I hope you guys take some notes and you know and then we'll figure out in the future what sticks what you have more questions about and then maybe we could make a webinar or a course or something a little bit more involved but today I just really wanted to take a look at the 2d felting and um and do the critiques and answer any questions about technique or imprimatura. So I broke my little handout. This is a handout that I had for, um, for my art classes into the three C's. 
which is um, color, contrast, and composition. But it kind of breaks down to more than that, actually. So, is, is hue and shade, are those two terms used interchangeably, is a question? Yeah, I think so. But shade, well, I feel like shade's like a tones. little blurry because shade might also refer to value. So someone okay. might say a lighter shade of purple. <laughs> okay. um, but yes, hue, you could talk about a shade of a color mm -hmm. and that would be, that would be hue. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Please um, to just stop a second and see, are there any other questions? Um, well, there's two others that I was going to toss in maybe when they made, uh, like fit into what you were saying. Can people use dog hair in a 2D? Okay. And um, someone uh, will have a question then when it when it fits for you, what you use to support it when you're working. Okay. The 2D. Okay, good. Um, dog hair, I have not felt it a ton with dog hair. I made Kyla's dog um, Finley in 3D with some of his hair, but I mixed it with wool. Um, yeah, my 2D, my 2D Finley that I made does have some of his fur. Oh, cool. But I also mix that with, with some merino. Oh, we should have had that here. Um, yeah, it needs a little wool, and uh, it just behaves a little differently than than wool does. Best, yeah, best to blend it at right. least. Right, right. So it sticks. Yeah. So when we are... Oh, boy, so much. <laughs> when we are designing, and, and a lot of this stuff will come up as we go through the pieces. Like, some of these points will be reiterated or even brought forward but what well, let's talk about composition first um placement of the main subject um the number of things for some reason in in art in arrangement in decorating odd numbers are generally um it's just sit better with us uh which is just interesting but um to groupings usually you know, seven of something will look better than six, so, or five. Um, the placement of the subject, deciding the size, I feel like every painting sort of has a size that it should be. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that as well. Um, there are a lot of techniques that you can use in your painting to bring things forward or to make them recede so shadows you kind of want to recede um, brightly lit leaves you might want to pop forward the eye of the subject of your portrait you might want to pop the things that make the things that draw the viewer's eye forward the most are harder sharper edges so the actual like sharpness of an edge, um, complementary colors, so blue right next to orange, like that draws the viewer's eye. High contrast, so a real dark next to a real light, that draws the viewer's eye. Warm colors come forward more and cool colors recede. And these are things that are just pretty much True, and then how you use them, you know, that's that part is up to you. Um, so the purity of a color is going to make it seem near. It just naturally, as we walk around the earth, things that are far away are um, less intense because there's atmosphere between us and them. And so there's distance, that's how to create distance. So, that's just sort of an overview of things that can you can use to energize your your art um so yeah contrast i mentioned like a strong contrast the viewer's eye will go there whereas where you maybe on the edges where you have some more medium values or darkness without a bright um light next to it that's going to sort of fade away and disappear and like i said as we go through these um, pieces, all of this, you know, I'll talk about all of this some more. Any questions at the moment? Um, no, there's
there's a good conversation happening about dog hair and how to use it. Um, <laughs> Linda, Linda Wenger, um, I was hoping she was on and would say something because she's like <clears throat> pet port. Yes. You know, we have one of Linda. Expert. Yeah. Um, she said the under, like the under fur works better than the, the top. Yeah, the outer fur, it's like pointy. It doesn't have any bend to it. It's kind of like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then um, Colleen shared brushing it out. It would be softer, and she's um, mentioning like the stiffer guard hair. So, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. People have, there's a lot of good stuff also being shared as you speak. Right, right, good. Okay, I'm going to start with a piece sent by Beth. Um, it's these tiger eyes. Ah, you cannot see it yet. There it is. <laughs> What's that? Sorry. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because this piece is a little bit smaller. So this was a fun... Um... <laughs> I can't get that. Kyla, I need you. What like, you. What's the problem? There we go. I don't know where to hold the remote to make it work. Okay. So this is a really fun subject. I think um, I'm not sure. I'm gonna. I'm sharing reference pictures today. This is you know we we can refer to things on the web to make our art. Um, it just when if you're gonna sell something or reproduce something, um, that's when you want to make sure you you either ask permission from the photographer by you know by the licensing. Um, but we're just we're just learning and creating and um, so. It's very helpful to see the reference picture. And if you are planning on making something, it's very helpful to have a good reference picture, especially for commissions. And that is a whole other, <laughs> whole yes. other discussion, um, which I'm happy to have. There's a whole, um, I think I, I think there might be a document in the files section of Sarah, of Fanfare about commissions. I think you have a blog. I, I feel like I've shared it before, but okay. So um, Beth felt that there could be more um, more uh, dynamics going on here. And it's actually coming through really nice when I look at it on camera. And it is really nice. It's a fun subject. It's a real challenge because you have three strong colors, black, white, and orange. And then you have the shadows and lights for each of those colors. So what I think, the eyes are really beautifully done. Um, she felt like it didn't seem so much like the brows were coming forward. And so I mixed some colors to just show, I'm not gonna like stab anything in, but I can lay some wool on here to sh show some ideas of what I would do. And um, another thing that's really helpful is to print your, have your uh, reference image in black and white, because then you can eliminate, especially when there's so much color and pattern involved, because you can eliminate the hue <laughs> and you're just left with value. And that helps when you're mixing colors to see, um, okay, this, um, this white under the eye is not in value if you held a um a value card up to this especially right here like how if you guys can see the difference between this and this that's a that's a pretty big um value jump there this um wheel also has a value scale that's a really handy thing to have so you could take this um you could take this color and put it up to the um to the value grayscale and say, okay, well, it's about here. Whereas this white is pretty much white. I mean, it's not even on the, it's not even on the value scale. So the, oops, you good, Kyla? Yeah. Okay. Good. So the piece, the actual felted piece has pretty much the same white. So what I did, you know what? I, I wish I had, I should have brought some Serafina white up. I'm not sure what Beth used here, um, but I mixed, I mixed a gray 
and I mixed it using like Hush and Dune and Nut and all the pretty colors <laughs> that I like so that it's not, we don't want our grays or our black highlights to be black and white mixed together. It's, de it's dead color. Um, a highlight or a shadow is greatly, the hue of it is really affected by what's happening around it. It is, the highlights are really just reflections of what is around an object. Um, so I mixed this slightly darker color and if we just start kind of putting that in a few places, things are going to start to pop here. I'm going to, the, I'm going to say the light is coming from the left a little bit. Um, it is in, in the reference picture. It is. And then same with the black, all of her black is black. So the light might be hitting this eyebrow, this one, definitely this one, maybe up here a little bit. And then also in these, um, eyelids there's a little bit more change she has black and you know almost white a really light gray but there's actually a third um kind of third value in there Beth said she used um seraphina white and stuff. okay okay great so her whites are pretty white already mm. yeah are asking for the tiger to be bigger and you to be smaller <laughs> oh okay <laughs> that's fine can you do that john yeah just the full screen just the um just make the overhead yeah. bigger like swap yeah 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 or swap that would be a good idea john's like that's a lot <laughs> and then same in the nose. I want, um, Ooh. what? It just switched. <laughs> I want a, a, a deeper dark here and a brighter bright here. So Beth, um, did darken this, but she also muted it a little bit. And it's really pretty in a, in a pretty intense color. Um, Yeah. <laughs> I can just move this up, John. This is how it is right now. Over here. John's moving us all around. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Oh, there you are in the corner. <laughs> so I mixed a, like a richer um, chestnut and then a really fun, bright... Um, and so now we're starting to get the tiger shapes that are sort of turning corners, you know, because of, because of the shapes. Um, this is very cool to watch. And like I said, it's very it's small amounts of wool, you know, it's not a lot. Is it coming across? I think so. Yeah, I really think okay. you can see, okay. um, I, I would guess in person even more so, but. Right. When you helped me with the Finley that I did, because there was a spot somewhere around his, the one side of his face, and it was all because of the shadow. I couldn't, yeah. it looked flat, and I couldn't yeah. get it to look, you know, more, have more depth. And right. the color you had me mix was this kind of purpley gray, like never would I have put those colors <laughs> in there. Because to me, I was just seeing, like, the, yeah. the, the darker. Um, but yeah, it, the purple, especially, is huge yeah so the only other thing like this piece I, I i would have given myself a little more room even though this 
you know, what might be the only reference uh, she had, you know, that amount of the, of the tiger. I would have just given myself a little more room because um, that might allow just a little more kind of freedom in your creativity. And then you can crop it wherever you want, you know, when you go to frame it or, um, or you know, present, oh God, I just fell off the table, or present it. <laughs> What did you use for the chestnut? Is it one of the merinos? Oh my gosh, you guys. I was just rich, grabbing at wool. Okay. <laughs> that was here. Um, it's got some core. It's got, uh, I don't know what this is, liver chestnut maybe? Okay. I think this is liver chestnut. I um, Up here um, where we film, I don't have all of the fiber. And so I'm always like running down to the other building and grabbing it and then I just end up with the most random stuff up here and I was just yeah, trying to yeah. use it. But this, people need to keep their random stuff because these are yeah. bits of fiber and bits of colors. Tiny that bits, it. yeah. So this has um, melon, I think, and dune and wheat. Um, this is the uh, the gray that I just used for the rhino. <laughs> so yeah, it's just all kinds of stuff. Um, Someone's asking about like a before and after. So if there's a way to, like, we have a picture of this from before posted on Fanfare. Um, well, I'm not changing anything permanently. Um, right. So I just was just to, like, have a still shot of this with kind of the side-by-side -side would be a neat comparison. Yeah. If you want to take a screenshot, well, I don't know. It's up to Beth, I guess. But this, I mean, I can take this fiber back off that I just put on. But um, I could take a picture of it and then make some posts later i guess should i do that yeah i'm gonna get a hang on i'll just take a picture of screenshot you hang on because i'm picking you up and are you moving <laughs> i am oh all right <laughs> you just went for a ride um let me see let me check my notes and make sure i didn't have anything you did such a good job on the eyes um i think you could reverse needle this a little bit and just soften it up and that will get the glassiness, um, you know, get a little more glassiness to it. All right, yeah, people can screenshot, that's good. Yeah, so. So cool. <laughs> so we, we created, there's two kinds of shadow, a cast shadow, which is when something, um, oh, I'm delayed. Okay. I know. I'm trying to make a cast shadow, John. You trying to put him in shadow? I'm trying to make a cast shadow, but our, we're so well lit, I can't even do it. So that's when, you know, you have a porch roof and the sun's out and the porch has a whole shadow across it versus like contours, which are the light reaching one part of something, but not the other because it's wrapped around the corner. And, and this... This piece uh, just needed a little more um, contouring, like, you know, color changes. So I'm going to give Beth this fiber and the black and white um, printout. Does Beth have, is she with us? Does she have any more questions she, before? She is with us. I mean, my guess is she doesn't want you to take off what you put on. I'd, I'd be like, no! <laughs> No, I can leave it there. It'll it'll stay put, you know. Yeah. Until she gets it back. But I think it looks pretty cool. I think it got a little more, um, a little more dynamic. So that was awesome. Thank you for sharing that. How do you make the glassiness? Okay, so the glassiness I would say would be the the kind of trick. She could use another white dot so that there's kind of like two. I like I said, I would soften this color transition between the green and the and the yellow. And then to really make it look glassy, I'm gonna use a little bit of the wrong color, but um just to kind of show. What happens to the eye is opposite 
of the white dot. The white dot is like the reflection of the light hitting moisture in our eye. But because our eyes are um, orbs and, I don't know what the right word is, trans, they're not solid. <laughs> they're like, um, they're like glass. You know what I mean? They're right, not right, like, right. they're not like granite. So, um, opposite that extra, that white dot kind of opposite, you want to put, um, a little more of a highlight and that really that really makes it look round um, it's not like I said I want her to soften this this green to yellow transition which I'm not I don't want to do um, right. for her but um, she did say very helpful she has no more questions and yes you can leave the fiber right where it okay, is okay okay <laughs> yeah it's really it's a fun one it's a fun it's a it's a challenge I'll show you guys the um I'll show you guys the zebra because it was a, it's a very similar challenge. Sorry for the noise. So maybe it'll be good to see the zebra um, close up. <laughs> so close up. All right. So I had, I had little shortcomings on this. Um, one of them was that I was working flat and my zebra looks a little kind of like cutesy because her little face got smushed. Um, okay. Did you pan the... Oh, you centered me by moving me. Never mind, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> It's good. It's good. Um, okay. So I was working flat. And when you're drawing flat, because of the angle, things get foreshortened. So it, it would be nice if you could work. Like, look how that changes when I lift it towards you guys. Like, look how freaking flat her, around her face is now versus stretching it out this way. So that's what was happening to me working flat. So if you can work on an easel or work on a drafting table where you at least have a little bit of an angle. Um, so she got a little short in here. But other than that, <laughs> I'm really happy with the fiber choices. And um, she, I feel like a black and white could have gone on any number of backgrounds. It would be super powerful on the red, on the blue. It just depends on, you know, what kind of art art you want to make um but i picked the pergamena because it's um just sort of reminded me of like the grasses where where she would live so i did use black um and raven in the darks and i used um probably seraphina white in the whites but almost everything else has a color to it so my grays um my grays are several colors mixed together my whites have in her forehead she has a lot of golden colors a lot of browns um anyway i had a i had a really good time with it um silk can be a really powerful sort of impact in your in your 2d because it's it's shiny so that's something that is hard to do with like watercolors don't have that <laughs> you know even pastels don't have that uh, i guess you could buy stuff with um with some glitter to it or whatever but any questions about the zebra but my point was um, it's like the tiger where you have black and white and then you have everything in between as they're turning you know turning corners basically uh, there's questions about what's the best thing to, to use to felt on. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to address, like, obviously the imprimatura line and also um, something more like where, like, the DHD Merino falls in versus flat mat. Um, and then yeah. a few questions. Someone said, um, sorry, is that it? Yeah, it's a, a wool background. 
So if you just address, like, maybe yeah. talk Backgrounds. a little bit about okay. the premature that people may not know. Yeah. If someone does have a question, how did you get depth in the ears? Okay. So the Imprimatura was designed for 2D wool painting, whether you're wet felting or needle felting. The Merino pre-felt from DHG is a little thin, I think, unless you were going to, you know, reinforce it with something um, or maybe wet felt it first so that it really tightened up and then, um, you know, and then felt on it. There are so many ways. I'm going to show you um, Linda's piece, which is on a fabric. So there's so many ways to go. I can't say, you know, what a person should do. And I don't have experience in all of them. In Prematura is a little pricey um, because we're creating the color and then creating the pre-felt. Flat matte is a very inexpensive <laughs> pre-felt. Um, the... the um, you know, a lot of our kits are made with flat mat, um, because the wet, felt, yeah, the wet, felt the wet felting kits and the, and oh, the rooster too. And the wren, right? Um, uh, yeah, the wren has flat mat. because it's affordable and we can't like, nobody would buy a kit that we are, we do have something that I'm working on that will have a piece of imprimatur in it. But, um, so we're up in the kind of up in the game on that, but I mean, for practice, for, for just, you know, a solid, consistent background, flat mat's great, especially if you're going to put a lot of color on it. Oh my gosh, I think I'm going to sneeze. I'm really trying not to. Say banana. Banana. What does that do? Oh, it, oh, it worked. I don't know which was worse. Would have been worse. Watching me try to not sneeze or watching me sneeze. Um... So, flat mat, very affordable. In Prematura, totally beautiful. <laughs> um, and if you're creating, you know, art to sell for commissions, totally worth it, I think. Um, and then... Is there something that you're only flat felting onto that you're not going to be wet felting and you really want, like, a wow background? The yes, Imprimatura. the Imprimatura. Totally yeah. worth it. Yeah. So, this is the Imprimatura. I'm using the... Um, Oh, I thought I had a piece. The, the two inch foam insulation, you can get at any hardware store. That's just a great support for, you know, for felting. I mean, something like this, you can move around on your stab it, but um, that is, it's kind of necessary really um, for larger pieces. And then once they're finished, um, I had a little wren that I just put a piece of um, foam core behind it and pushed, like cut the foam core to the right size and push that into the frame and it worked great. This I have put on um, canvas stretchers. So you just, you just buy them at the, um, at the art store and they just snap together and you can buy them in any inch size and you have your you have your stretcher and I actually have um, a few frames I can show you guys how things look framed um, I don't have a great one for this one but okay before okay. you start on your next thought, oh what did I miss um, okay several people interested in asking about a sampler kit of the colors which um, is a little tricky because of how we make them, but I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah. I um, think for the Imprimatura, right. what they're asking about. So there's 10 colors. There's very nice pictures of them um, on the website, so I'm not gonna like spend a ton of time going over um, all the- Well, I mean like selling them as a sampler, like getting pieces of each. Yeah, I know. I don't have the answer because I- um... The way that we make them we wanted them to have the nice edge on every yeah. side. So they're all hand stretched. We're not cutting any part. If we did a sampler, we would have to cut them up. Right, right. Um, which, could, which could be. Yeah, it just kind of defeats the whole like rough edge. I mean. That was part, part of our goal to have yeah. that, you know, unfinished edge. It's a trade-off, I think, for, yeah. um, 
for, you know, you could get a quarter of each piece. I just, it still would be so expensive though. For all 10 colors. For all 10 colors, yeah. But maybe we could do half and half or something like that. But um, yeah, someone else asked about that. So I will definitely think on that some more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how tightly do you stretch it onto the frame? How tightly is the zebra stretched? Um, I don't pull on it like I would a canvas, like a linen canvas you really want. To, to, I use canvas pliers and really stretch around. Um, but this, I just, I just did it just, just hand tight. Um, cause it doesn't need, because the painting's done, like, so it doesn't need to be so supportive that, you know, that it's super tight, like a drum. You could also buy inexpensive cotton canvas is already stretched and put it over that and that way it would also have that bit of a background mm -hmm. to it so all right john we're going back overhead this piece is amazing uh this is steph i believe yeah so nice she used um the uh the feather technique on all the leaves which is a really really nice look because they actually it's almost like a relief you know they have they're creating shadows because they are actually shapes so that's another really cool thing about wool painting is there can be some relief to it your fur can look like fur because it actually is <laughs> fur you know what i mean like you don't have to Oh, the depth of the ears of the zebra. That's what I forgot. Uh, yes, Ash, Laura, Laura's on there and answering a lot of questions. So okay. She did get into some of the color, <laughs> so, some of the like shading and whatnot. Right. But I think you were going to address a little bit of that here, too. I can address it here, too. I work in my paintings and in my wool dark to light. So anything that's dark, I am establishing that first. So the insides of the zebra's ears... I just made a really dark, dark. And then, you know, and then as the ear is sort of coming, turning its shape, and then it has like, um, actually the fur changes color and it's brighter on the sides. I let that overlap the dark a little bit. And the fox will have, the fox will have this too. I'm gonna scoot this up so we're mainly um, focused on the fox. And then just kind of go through, um, my thoughts and some suggestions. I think this Delisa, is a- Delisa mm -hmm. and Sabine are super excited about the feather leaves. Yes, they're beautiful. They're very nice. I love to the, um, the locks texture on the tree. That's a really nice, um, there's so much to talk about in this piece. <laughs> um, I love using the wool to do its thing. You know what I mean? Like the lock, because it's textured, is creating a barky texture versus stabbing, you know, trying to stab the texture of bark. Um, I have a reference picture here. It's really fun. Now this is actually backlit. So I'm gonna approach my suggestions for the fox kind of based on that, but the light is sort of coming a little bit from behind and from the right. I love the size. I don't usually love things coming right to the bottom, but I have, a, I have like if I have the bottom of an animal, I would rather have it up the, the picture a little bit, not sitting on the bottom of the picture. But the focus really is here. So I have some suggestions for this. Great complementary colors. We basically have um, red and green going on here, which is, is just fun. Um, I want to talk a little bit about drawing on this piece. And I hope this um, shows up well. I think it will. I'll zoom in a little bit. 
so this is a whole nother thing, right? Like how do we get our image onto our background? And I like to learn how to draw. I think it's, I think draftsmanship is a really important part of all of this. It's just one, it's another thing to learn, right? In addition to techniques and colors and everything. Um, there's a, an item on the market called a Lucy. And the Lucy works as kind of like a viewfinder, but then it also projects what you're looking at onto your canvas. Um, I kind of like that idea versus um, tracings. So you can look into those. Um, it's popping up on my Facebook now. Someone like kind of remade it. I used one forever ago um, in my dad's studio. But I'm going to give you a few drawing tips too. So, so one thing, so Steph, um, I wish I had her um, email up specifically. But what from what I remember, because um, this was several weeks ago, was um, she's really has a lot of realism going on here and wanted the fox. Um, she said it felt a little, you know, not shapely enough in the shoulder and wanted to get a little realism. So these are where my um, suggestions are going to go. The one of the things that I saw, it's all proportionately here, but we tend to simplify we tend to smooth the things that we see so when we're drawing um for example um when i look at this fox's chest i see something like this That's the, when I'm looking at the white, that's what, that's the shape I see. Whereas what is depicted here is more of a rectangle, right? Just very straight lines here. When I look at the top line of the fox, and these are all like things that make the fox foxy, you know? <laughs> this is what I see from the ear down. I'm exaggerating a little bit. This, okay, that's his ear up there. And this line is very straight. So just making those changes is gonna give this fox a lot more, um, a lot more of his contours and shape. And then, so that's kind of more of like the exterior. Same thing with the legs. We've got the legs going, you know, parallel to each other, where maybe a little, um, a little difference would be good. What's the other line I was looking at? Yeah, that's about that's about that. So when I'm drawing, um, there's a lot of little tricks. Like you could look at something, the top of his head, let's say is horizontal. So I look at something horizontal versus vertical. The side of his ear is vertical. Um, his chest is about, you know, is at a slight degree that the nose like, so she did that really well, actually. Um, it's just these, these shapes getting a little more kind of a little more, um, a little more shape to them. Um, Laura just said her, her tip was to squint, like just look through your eyelashes to get yeah. a sense of the, the bigger shapes rather than details. Yeah, that's a great idea. And squinting helps with value as well. Um, seeing it's so light. funny to see better, you squint. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. You know what else is really fun is to take, take something like this and draw it. Like get, just print yourself a picture and sit down with a piece of paper and draw it. And then turn it upside down and draw that. I've done that in my classes and it's amazing. And even for me, my, my, my upside down has so much, it's like more alive. I don't know what happens. 
It's like you you stop when it's this way. Your brain is going. This is a fox, and a fox has a pointy nose, and and you know their eyes should be here. And your brain's making all these decisions um, that are based on I don't even know what. But when it's this way, you can't do that. You have to pay attention to what the lines like. I I totally see this shape this way. If I had it this way, I would be like, oh, I know that. I do that all the time. So. Um, drawing upside down is a great exercise. That's my point. Um, okay. I love that we went a little darker here. I think because he's resting on the bottom, I would maybe... Where did I put my colors? No, I mixed a green. I would maybe, I don't have the right color here, but I would just like fade this away a little bit. They're very dark on their legs. And so just imagine that that's what's happening here. And so I want to create less value difference down here. There already is less value difference, but I, I kind of want to do it more so that we really ignore this and look right here which is what's happening. All the leaves are pointing to him. Um, it's, it is, it's a nice composition. So then I would maybe, um, don't worry about his little haunch, just let him, you know, get kind of dark and disappear. And um, we don't need to see all of that. If I had a darker green, I might lay a few fronds kind of sticking up over his, over his legs. Now, once we get a little more shapes going on that in addition to a bit more she has it under here this dark color but in addition to a bit more um, contrast is really gonna pop things off um okay so i would get a little darker in in some of these places so if we got a little darker here and got these greens just a little darker, then you really could um, backlight him if you wanted to. Can you scooch him up so we see what you did at the bottom there? Yeah. I'll just zoom out just a tiny bit too. You think you're good? No, I think we're good. Yeah. So by, like, like I said, if I had a darker green here, I'm just gonna use this um, wood, but it's a little, I would mix this up and not make it, this would be a slightly different color, but I'm really just going for the value. So he's still there and you're still going to have, you know, legs and stuff, but just let them disappear a little bit. Okay. And then up here. She said she planned to do, um, locks at the bottom oh okay nice like the brush, good so yeah. yeah yep um this is very vivid which is okay as we're getting towards his face um but it does pull the eye so and then this too maybe um maybe mute that this is nice and muted i love that maybe mute this green just a little bit um, so that they so that they go into the distance more, and then it really uh, is it really is amazing the couple of touches what a big difference <laughs> just seeing it. Yeah, cool, good, good. It's that's it's so it's so fun. Like it like um, this area could go a couple of values darker. So just letting, it's really only white. She's a really nice white on this edge. It's really only white here and right here. Like if you squint your eyes and everything else is a tone darker, is like more like probably something in between these two. Let me mix them. Let me take, oh, she's got her star colors right here. I could be using her colors. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you. Everyone's decided that um, people just should just work upside down. <laughs> so I'm and then we'd see it exactly like we were supposed to see it because <laughs> we were working upside down. So I'm using some of her mixes now. which is beautiful mix it's look her mix and my mix are almost the same um but all this that's even darker this down here turns a corner right this is going back between his legs um let's go ahead and get this i'm just gonna do it just to show it and this is like not quite the right color that she would use but I just want to show how I see this shape. Uh, Stephanie asked for you to please leave the touches in place. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We'll get them. In, we'll get them in place. Now, what color would you do along along the back? I would do this nice bright um, pop that she has here. Can make okay, him a little just bit. Just to get the shape a little more like not not just the straight slope, but to get the kind of the bump. Yeah, I'm I'm just putting the little bumps there oh, a I little see. bit. Yeah. Ooh. And I'm getting this this broken up this shoulder that was you know that was very straight she's the, the head is great I actually um you know I don't have too much there I mean you could pop I love this pop under the eye um it's so foxy this this light chestnut under the eye I'm, you know, I'm not doing a great job here. <laughs> I'm just, like, I'm not well, stabbing according or according to the chat, you are anything. So. But like, so basically, on the, it's just a little oversimplified in shape and values, and so and and grit. Like you know, get a little bit of these deep. Um, she's got the color under here. Just reveal a little bit more of that. That dark that was there, you know. Um, trying to think if I have anything. Background greens to pop the fox. Yeah, so the green is great behind him. I just, I just would maybe mute um, these bright ones just a little bit. This could go a little darker. Break this. You have all these coming up. Um, I would break this up a little bit so that um so that they're not all kind of like coming right here like they would be interrupted by the fox shape you know what i mean like break that up a little bit well and that just <laughs> makes him pop right off then yes yes instead of everything yeah um but what like what a beautiful piece and there's a ton of work in this but nothing is there's nothing here that can't be just, it's just going to take the tiniest bit of tweaking, really. It's not a whole redo or anything like that. It's really just a little bit of tweaking. I love the way she's got the, um, you know, the fringe coming over the ear, the fur coming there. The eye is good and it's okay if the eye is just dark, you know, I mean, the, you've got, you did get a little bit of light in there and that's nice. Um, yeah. Would you do a tiny, a tiny bit um, more on the other side of the nose? Laura's being like just a tiny highlight along the forward edge of the nose. Yeah. You yeah. Definitely. A little more. Yeah. You could take this. This is has a lot of silk in it, so it's going to be hard to get the right um, length. But just that. It like I said, does it does not take much. 
It's awesome. Yeah. It's not quite, you know, it, it doesn't quite do that. It, it turns, but I don't can't get it yeah. short enough. She's got really good color in her nose itself. Yeah, the face is really good. good. So. And it's nice, too, that um, this is pretty quiet. You know, there's there's a lot happening elsewhere. So um, if you do put locks down here, I would keep them on the on the quiet side. Um, the background's really pretty. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this could this could get whatever value you put there. I would definitely put there. And you have maybe a little bit too much of the eye here. You really don't see it. So it's okay to let this um, bridge of the nose block, you know, block the eye that is is there. Um, love the awesome. love the leaves. Yeah, it's really it's very pretty. So I will leave these here and um, put your wool back. Yeah, and if you guys want to post, you know, any changes that you made once you get these back, that would be really fun. Actually, that's what we should do is we should ask the artist to, you know, share. Yeah, their, their before and yeah, because they sent me their before picture, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I did. I printed this in black and white as well, which um, really helps you see the value changes. Okay, so this is fun. Um, Linda works on, um, this is on, on, feels like cotton, maybe. And I have never done that. <laughs> and I think she's just doing such a nice job. Um, I don't have too much to say. When... Uh, so Linda wants to know when working on a solid background, how to tie the piece in, how to anchor it, how to give ground it. And um, this is a perfect subject because we do have, you know, we do have the kitten on its hind legs and we have the, um, the yarn ball in front. So there is a ground, like something like the zebra. I didn't want to ground really. I was just going for more of a, you know, here's the zebra. Um, not really here's the zebra in nature, you know, with shadows and background and everything like that. So the options are to just let it pop, like let it be just the subject on the background, um, to ground it by bringing a shadow off of it or a complementary color, which I usually either try to go complementary so it really pops or similar so that it, I'm using a color, you know, from the subject in, in the, the background. Or like as in the case with the hounds, let me just show this real quick. The, the, what you're making can kind of emerge from the background because, um, because it has the background color in it or it's slightly incomplete. Um, so, <laughs> can do it um i can paint but i can't work the remote um so you know he fades away because he's got mostly background he's mostly background <laughs> with just a little bit of color indicating his face and then these guys um the background color is in them a lot and so they sort of emerge from it so that's another that's another approach. And if I had more paintings around, I could show more um, examples of this. So you can either let it pop. There's a great artist um, I've been in touch with. And I'm not remembering her name right now, but she does, um, she does a lot of dog portraits on a solid background. And they're just popping off. You know, she doesn't 
they're usually kind of coming out of a corner, um, like really fun angles and stuff. Linda said that's why she usually doesn't do the full figure. Right. <laughs> Which is fun. It's just, it's a, you know, these are the choices. These are the choices in our composition and our, um, the direction we want to go. Um, but the when pause, you... The paws are definitely jumping off of that thing. Yes, it's really fun. And the yarn too. I love the treatment of the yarn. So there's a little shadow going on here. And that is a great way to do it. If, um, if I were like to tackle the same subject, I would have the, one of the colors of my, um, maybe my highlight in my black. I'm just gonna put, a, I'm gonna pretend, it doesn't need this, but I'm putting this on there to, because this is the color I have. <laughs> and I wanna show how I would relate the background um, to the, uh, or the subject to what I do here. Okay, and then this would be a real, I would just go a little darker with this. And I would kind of go swoop like that, because you got this, and I would just let it fade away this way. Um, and maybe, maybe if you have another piece of yarn, just put it like, have something overlap this other foot a little bit, maybe, I don't know, just thinking out loud. So having the color that you're going to add to your background be something that's in the picture is, is a good way to go, is a fun way to go. I'm kind of pretending like the light is coming this way. Maybe we even lose the blue there, I don't know. No, it needs it there. And then I meant to grab, um, I meant to grab some uh, eggplant. <laughs> hey John, can I ask you a favor? Sure. Are, are you able to move? Yeah. <laughs> In the middle room, um, in that shelf that's next to the steps, we see, of all the merinos, we see if near the bottom if there's like a grape or dark red or... Okay. okay. I just want to get a little more depth in the yarn ball. Um, but anyway, I, I don't have too much to say except that I would just go a little darker. I think what's here is a little too close to the, um, to the background color. And um, and then the idea of whatever's happening in your main subject, you know, could be like one of those colors could be what this color is. And that just, that brings it together um, instead of introducing yet another color. Every picture has its like, its color world. Um, it has what's right for it and not for any other painting. I really struggled with the, um, with the 2D hair with that. Like I, and I still am, I'm still working on it. Work. Yeah, sure, that's good, thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks. Linda's asking what's the best fiber to use for shadows. She said she has a hard time getting it to look smooth and transparent. Yeah, I think, it. you know, I've never worked on, um, on this. It's so, hot. She said it's hot. Yeah, I've never worked on it, so I don't know what felt um what felt really well into it. I think it's might be more technique um like just uh you know, stabbing it really well. Merino, once it's all fuzzed out and if you blend it together, it it can look really smooth. I think I would avoid, this looks like it has a little bit of variegation in the color. I think I would avoid that and try to try to use a, a uniform color. All right, 
I mean, there's nothing. This is, it's very nice. There's nothing I really, <laughs> hopefully that was helpful, but, um, you know, it, it, it's just, it's very nicely done and it's just, you know, trying different things and seeing what works for you and. That kitten does look like it's right paw. Yeah. Just like it's very nice. To grab yeah. Yard. Any other questions about this? Um, okay. Linda said she feels like Merino gets too streaky. It can, yeah. You know, the something like the horse coats, that is a blend of Merino and core and a little bit of Tussa. And that whole, that blend is made to be very smooth because that's what we want want the horse coats to look like so blending is great i just um i would try to like not have a lot of different strands of colors um but you know wet felting is really is what smooths things out really so but if you like to work on linen or cotton or um i don't know I don't know if it's a matter of like the punch tool or I've just never done it before. So. Lovely. So lovely. A lot of people are um, just really enjoying themselves and learning a lot. So. Okay. Good, good, good. All right. I love the little, the birches. This is from Shannon really fun subject and um sorry i was just reading my notes to see <laughs> so this has as it is now it was really interesting to get it in person versus um seeing the photos as it is now, I feel like it's pretty kind of graphic, almost has kind of a primitive style, which I'm gonna try to make some suggestions because you could take it that way and and have this fun because it's this beautiful colors. You know, the red with the black and white is just very wintry. And then with the cool, um, you know, the cool sky or the cool snow. So, that is a whole style and this could be um further developed with that style in mind or we could say well i i want this to be more realistic then i have some pointers for that as well um so if it were if we wanted to leave it in this more kind of graphic style um i would i would maybe outline the birches especially on like one side um i would pop the the bird chest and berries like with the brightest brightest red possible um And you don't have to outline them with black, right? Like you could just use a dark. Um, I don't work that way very often, but. Um, Shannon is good with all suggestions. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just really have fun with these, with these brights, and I wouldn't mess with the with the background too much. Like it's nice, you know, and um, maybe some. So that's that's one direction to keep it like. I don't want to say it's sort of I'm going to use the word flat, but I mean like that's what primitive is. It's it's more just direct shapes, colors and um 
you know, really letting that do the speaking. If we wanted to bring this a little more um, representational, like a little more realistic. I don't really like the word realistic, but um, I have another set of, of ideas. Okay, so we have six trees, which is kind of like a an even number thing, but she has them in a group of three. So <laughs> it's, it works. We're kind of, we're, we're doing okay with that. So I don't know if you guys can, like, I see it very clearly. I'm like, this is three, like one, two, three, even though it's six. So that's one way to handle even numbers is to break them into an odd grouping. Um, what I didn't see when I saw the picture and I see now is this, this is, there's sort of a background snow and a foreground snow. And she's got the snow going horizontally. And what that does is it, it, it's, it tells you that the bottoms of the trees are, you know, sort of in the distance. So these trees are far away. A way to give this more depth pretty easily would be, so these branches are not from these trees. These branches are from closer trees. <laughs> um, so I would just make these branches bigger. Um, I would just make them wider. And that, just that is going to say, okay, this is a different scale than this and this. Um, And this is going to be hard to like lay in, but I will try. And and let them have a little like I mean I should I, I haven't studied birch trees lately, but. Um. Shannon said she added, she added that in after the picture because she didn't like the bottom. Okay, so you had these coming. I think it's fine. I think it's great. I just I do think we need to distinguish between what's near and what's far. Um, this is the most interesting point because we have a few things overlapping. So this bird overlaps nothing, this bird overlaps nothing. So if you wanted to create a little more um, depth and realism, I would, it's just that things need to overlap a little bit so that we know what's coming in front and what is going behind. So maybe we make this branch a little bit bigger and we bring, I, I do not have exactly the right colors here, but we bring this little guy forward by just letting him overlap this birch a little bit. Like I said, not quite the right colors. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't have him in the, he's not in the shot. I got it now. Is he in the shot now, John? Oh yeah. Okay. It's so cool. You can really like push the wool around and this guy needs a little, he could be, Maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, so. Shannon says she has to remind herself it's okay to overlap. Yeah, yeah. It's, and Shannon, please don't take this the wrong way, but it always reminds me of like when we're little and someone says, draw your family, right? Or draw like your house, or we put like mom, dad, do, and then this house dog did, and and we don't it that's actually like a de developmental thing artistically to to layer to layer things and overlap them it's just it's a it's like a 
progression. And, and that's, that's another just really common thing is to hesitate on that. And, um, but where I, I, when you sent the picture, I think I said to Kyla, like, I was like, this is the most interesting part of the picture, you know, because that's where things were overlapping. So, um, like right here, you know, uh, let's see what else was, what else was in my notes? Hmm. Add more dark in the distance as a, yeah. Um, this little bit of like slightly darker color is great. That pops this sort of main tree and bird um, forward. Shadowing on birches a bit. Oh yeah. So the birches are right now um, pretty much black and or white and, and dark gray. So if we wanted to do some realism, we could put... Sometimes branches make cast shadows on the trees, and that's a really nice way. That's a little like fun little thing to do, just to be like, oh, and you, and if you curve them, it makes it makes the tree look round, which is cool. And then maybe um, I don't know a little bit of a little bit of interrupt to the white. Um, would be, would give them a bit of realism. I should bring up a, a picture of birches. I'm, I'm winging it without a reference picture. This is a, it's, it's a fun subject. It's a great size. Um, You know, it's a nice scale. I was gonna put a little bit, I don't know if it's gonna work or not. This is not, this is a little too warm, but you could also have a little bit of shadows um, in the distant snow. This, is, this color needs to be cooler. Oh, I see. This is a little too dark. So that's my, my input on that. Um, what is the best color to shadow snow? Ooh, that's a tough one because it just depends on the day, but sometimes it looks very, very cool, almost blue. Um, generally purple is my go-to shadow color. Um, that comes from watercolors <laughs> because anything that you needed to shadow, especially cast shadow, a glaze of purple over it, took it, um, took it the right direction. Um, I would have to look at some reference images, but I feel like capturing snow is kind of like capturing water. It's hard to do. Um, I, I, I have a snow painting. <laughs> A snow slash beach painting. <laughs> um, any more questions on this? Shannon said she still struggles with shadows and light sources and that she is still learning and overcoming high school art teacher trauma. Oh, no. That's terrible. Oh, gosh. And I don't know what kind of, what kind of, um, like, what makes these berries. But I, I love that these are pointing up. So you've got all these pointing down, but just, you know, something going another direction, I think is also, would also be really fun. That one doesn't need to be all the way up there, but you know, a couple of twigs pointing up. Did, I don't think, did we get, a, I don't know if we had a reference image for this or just, I don't feel like I had a reference image. I don't, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. But that's okay. I mean, it's 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 great to do, you know, something that's either out of your head or like a conglomeration of ideas. Um, that's I went to that sky and clouds workshop, and we did not use pictures, and that was kind of that was kind of incredible to 
to just visualize um, to just visualize clouds and and try to make them you know I'm just making I'm gonna... Go ahead. I'm going to ask if you could add a bit of definition to the bases of the trees by using some yellow-orange just to indicate the fungus on birch trees. I didn't know birch trees got fungus, but... Yeah. Yeah. Which, you... um, if you're trying to get them to go more into the background, like where are you wanting to put your highlights? Yeah. I think in this case, because it's so... This, this color palette is just so established and... Um, I don't know that I would introduce different colors down here. I think it would draw the eye. I mean, that's like, yes, there's a lot. We want to work with what's here. You know what I mean? Like, not like reimagine the entire thing. Um, but yeah, I, that's why I was putting, I was putting just a little bit of like shadowing down here. But I don't know that it's important you know, to see the bottoms of them. And that's, I think that's why she, you know, kind of covered them up because they were, um, you know, just coming down here so striking. I kind of like them fading away a little bit. She said it's a version of the trees out of her kitchen windows. Nice. Awesome. Very cool. I gave this a little overlap right there. Um, yes, very good. I'll show you guys my snow scene. I, you know, I did the red tree and I was like, I don't love this. It's so loud. And um, it's its own thing. It's okay. I was experimenting and learning and that's good. And then I was like, I'm going to do something subtle and soft and lovely and that was when we um, did a little live of, of um, wet felting this, and, and I don't like it. Um, I just, I don't, like, it's not unpleasing or anything like that. It's just, it just wasn't what I was trying to do. And, um, and when I laid it out, it was very ethereal and, like, fluffy and, and then when I wet felt it, it was like, um, this, and I, and I do this in skies with painting too. Cl clouds are so subtle. Like the changes in them are so subtle. And I'm so used to painting animals and trying to represent the light and dark of something and the color of something and the roundness of something that it's hard for me to soften up when it comes to clouds. Um, so even when this was before it was wet felted, um, I felt like it had a lot more subtlety to it. And then I wet felted it and I just like, all I see is gray, yellow. Like I just, I see it too, um, too vivid. And then these don't fade away enough and I don't know. So my snow has blues and purples in it um you know like this this purpley area is like kind of like if the sun's here then these trees are casting a shadow on the snow but that's that so i I'm, i, I want to try this again Oh, good. The red tree. I think you said you didn't, you were like, eh, on the tree, but people <laughs> are really excited about the tree. I think it's just like, it's, um, yeah. All right. I like the composition. I love the textures. I like... Um, the darks. I like, I like how the darks, if you look closely, there's a lot happening, but from a distance, um, it, it's, it just fades away, which is the way it should be. I tried using silk. 
I was trying to capture on my way home from work, there's, it's probably a maple, but I really prefer the shapes of an, of an oak. <laughs> so I sort of mashed it up, but a red maple that was dropping its leaves. And so like the tree is beautiful. And then there's this like blanket of, of leaves on the ground. So that's, that was my inspiration. And, um, yeah, I was working with this, um, sorry silk, which is really cool. Gives a lot of good texture. This is, um, pieces of silk cut up. Yeah, it's fun. It's like, it's like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like make believe kind of, I feel like, but that's okay. Fiber over the snowy, your snowy beach scene. I could, but it's all, it's all wet felted. This is a case where I don't think I want to try to fix it. I think I just okay. want to do it again <laughs> and just, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, maybe I would do something with that down the road, but, or like use it in something. Um, but yeah. So the hair I'm working on as a project um, to share. So that's been a lot of fun and kind of fun to figure out. It's, I, I feel I did it once before this one and then I did this one. I'm like, okay, it's getting there and I'm gonna do it again and I feel like I'll have it ready to, um, to start to share. So that'll be fun. And that's, I love, that's a wet and needle felting combo, which is, you know, just a really fun thing to do. With the pieces like the hounds and the zebra, um, I will probably, I will, I will frame them like in a more traditional way. So, because there's not a ton of texture there. It's all needle felted. It's all very flat. You could even put glass over it with something like the tree and the hair, there's a ton of texture. I'm, I might put it in a frame, but I don't think I would put glass. I actually have a frame that kind of works for the hair. I'll show you. Sorry, John, Ooh, I'm, going, I'm going back. That's really good. The hair frame is awesome. <laughs> yeah, so, oh gosh, the color is so cool. Well, maybe it doesn't look that way on them. Um, so I have this stretched. It, this is actually meant to be more like um, 11 by 14 or 14 by by 18, but I have it stretched on 14 inches square because I had this frame <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna make this fit in the frame. But when you wrap the wool all the way around, especially this because all of this is thick with locks and stuff, when you wrap it around the stretcher bars, um, it is a little tricky to fit into the standard size frame. But I had this frame, and I think it's I think it works great. Um, sorry, awkward moment. Yeah. So yeah, it's like a little hard to shimmy in there. But I think that could look really cool. It would look really cool. A little bit of excitement about a tutorial on the hair. Yeah. Good. Awesome. It's gonna be fun. probably after the new year. So yeah, he looks, he looks, um, here, I'll hold it, I'll hold it up and back. <laughs> oh, fit, fit. Anyway, there he is. So there's a lot of um, pretty decent standard frames. Um, maybe I can link some, some sites later, but, um, you know, tons of the stretcher bars and come in that standard frame size and framing is so expensive, um, that it's discouraging, you know, but this was a custom frame from, from a painting long ago. I have a few of those sitting around. This is one of the, um, the ones you can buy online, it's just landscape frames. Um, this worked on the, somewhat worked on the, um, 
if I like this painting, I would, <laughs> I would put it in that frame, maybe. Alrighty, I think, um... Will you put spacers between the wool and the mat, or just... I don't think so. No. Mm -mm. Yeah, from the distance, someone said the snow and sky scene is a whole different image, which you don't, it's totally, like, from where it is now, Yeah. when you just, when you just held the frame up, Yeah. you get a much different sense of the sky. Yeah, and I don't know. It's the just... closer you get, it's harder... <laughs> I mean, maybe I should try, maybe I should try putting, like, messing with it. I could run it through the felting machine, which would force the layers together. And then I could wet felt it again and see what happens. Right. It could be an experiment, like I was talking about with the, um, you know, with old paintings, painting over old paintings. Some of my best paintings were over old paintings, so... Maybe that's a stay tuned and I'll give it a shot. Right. Um, but, you know, let us know how you guys um, enjoyed today, what your questions are, like what things you would like to develop further. I, you know, I could talk about choosing fibers, blending, blending colors a lot. It's, it's a little easier to do through example than like just all theory <laughs> or we could like you know like in oil painting classes and watercolor classes we we could just mix colors like sometimes we would just okay let's let's get this color and this is what happens when we mix these two colors together um but having uh similar fibers and or similar project i i feel like i've i feel like i'm forgetting something i i talked about we didn't get um was it Margaret's rooster? No, and it was supposed to come yesterday. Yeah, which is a bummer. Um, let me just. Yeah, no, I think I, I think I touched on everything that I wanted to touch on, and hopefully, um, you know, taking a look at a few different artists' work was helpful. Um, oh, people seem to have learned a ton. Okay, good. Um, good. <laughs> someone asked you to explain the imprimatura more. Okay. So if you want to just show each. Sure. You know, yeah. show the colors or yeah. open it up and really. Yeah. I'm not sure how it'll show up on the. On camera, the pictures, Tabitha did a great job getting some of the texture yeah. and all that. Yeah, so the idea was to give us a nice variety in value, you know, hue and intensity to um, to start painting. And so like on the hair, I worked on Spumato, which is um, the smoky purple, because I wanted, I wanted that softness. I wanted the complement to the green. I wanted that purple um, to come through in places, relate to the locks and help gray out the browns. So there's, you know, there's, there can be, you could just love the color <laughs> and want to work on that color, but there could be a bit of thought behind why you choose the color you choose. Um, the hounds, I used um, chiaroscuro, which is a name of a technique of like a high contrast, you know, real darks, real lights. Rembrandt did that a lot. Um, the tree I did on uh, Lusoria, which is the the red, um, obviously because, and I and I actually, you know, I have samples of these, and you can just break these colors up and plop them in. Like I put the I put the chiaroscuro in here where I needed darks. You could even take like let's say I was doing a landscape. And I wanted this bright, lit, you know, lit, subtle sky, but a strong um, foreground. I could take this for my sky, br split it in half, and use um, paisaggio, paisaggio, which is the green, for the bottom. 
um, or the red even, that would be like amazing. Red undertone to a landscape in green is really, really beautiful. So they're all about, um, we try to make them 24 inches square. Some might be a, a tad smaller and they're all a quarter of a pound. So they're gonna be between most about, you know, between 3.75 and four ounces of fiber. So it's a lot of fiber. They can be stretched a little bit. Um, when you wet felt, they don't shrink a super ton. Uh, they're very smooth and, um, yeah, and, and, and sturdy enough to work on just needle felting right into it, which is what the hound and the zebra are. So, and I feel like Penova, which is peacock, um, isn't coming through as teal as it really is. It's a very rich, beautiful color. Um, but, but we really yeah. got the colors as, as good as we could on camera. Both, both, yeah, both in the pictures and on the camera, whatever it is, yeah. it's just not quite. Yeah. It's pretty, it's just yeah. prettier in person. So they're pretty, you know, they're not like thick, thick, but they're substantial um, so that, you know, they can be put right to work. I haven't played, someone asked about making a Santa coat with them. I haven't played with that um, too much with with using them in um, 3D felting. They, they pro I don't know if they could be pulled thinner because um, I feel like it would be a little thick for for clothing if you wet felted it. But if you were just needle felting, yeah, this is a great start because it's already, you know, fabric like. Um, if, if you tear them in half to use the two colors, do you put them on another background to keep them together or just overlap the seams or what do just you Just overlap the seams and, you know, if you're wet felting, that'll be fine. Um, you okay. could you could tease up the fiber a little bit so that when you overlap, you know, that you know that they're gonna interlock. But um, yeah, they wet felted, everything wet felted to it um, really well. Um, you know, we had one feedback on the hummingbird. I mean, the hummingbird's an awesome kit and I'm super happy with it. But, but flat mat is white and it can, because you're felting everything together, some of those white fibers can come through and the hummingbird in particular is a very dark, rich, um, saturated project. And so having those, he was, he didn't, I think he was a he, um, didn't like that the white fibers were poking through. And that's just, you know, that's the val a value in, in starting with something that is a similar color or you want that, that bleed through to be that color. Um, so these are like a, you know, like Kyla said, you wouldn't want to buy this and then totally cover it <laughs> and what felt it, you might as well just use, um, something, something less expensive, but the, um, the snowscape I started on, uh, Dorado, which is the, the golden one, um, because I knew what I wanted. Hmm? Sorry. That's all right. What would you use? What would you use for a night sky? The carbonate? Like, do you think more the gray or the um, dark purple for a night sky? Yeah, or the or the. Um, oh, the carbonate. The yeah. The teal. Yeah, I mean, it just you know, depends on your vision and what other colors you're using, I guess. Can the layers be split? That's what I was just. Um, let me go get one that's not. Like a nice one. <laughs> one second. So this one was considered a second because um, it has a little bit of a just you know one side we could do the color didn't blend like all of the way so let's see um 
they can, it's going to get on the thin side. Um, and then like exactly how consistent each side right. is will be the net. But if like, if you just, like I said, if you needed to start to a piece of clothing or something that you were going to wet felt, um, that could work, but you might have spots that don't pull apart evenly, but I was able to flake that. So what I'll show you, you use for a hummingbird. I'll show you how hard it is to pull apart. Um, it's not that hard to, to, to pull apart yet. It is, um, you know, it is definitely <laughs> a sheet. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we, we got a good balance between, I like, I like the amount that it's felted in other words. Oh, I mean, it's a, a hummingbird could be, it could be on anything, you know, it just depends. Like if you really want the hummingbird to stand out, maybe you go really light and then your right. hummingbird is all the brights on it. Um, so probably would go lighter. Any other questions on these? Uh, we consider selling seconds. Yes. Of the premature. Yeah, we will. We will ultimately have a listing of seconds. And maybe that would be, maybe that would be a good one to do four quarters of. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of almost like an imprimatura, um, wool bits, but I mean, not in the sense it's, that it's all broken up, it, but yeah. In prima, imperfect. Imprimatura. Yeah. <laughs> in perfect. I tried to make that a whole word. It wasn't working. <laughs> it was a good, good thought, a good attempt. What do you think about felting on old jeans as a material? That's fun. Got some jeans I would like to felt. I've never, I haven't worked on fabric before. Um, so I don't have a ton of input on that. But I know people have done it. Yeah, I think, you know, the background, the whether what color it is, what value it is, what kind of material it is. That's all a part of the, of the choice, I guess, depends on the techniques you're using and how big it is and your ultimate plan for it, you know? Right. <laughs> I really enjoyed receiving the artwork. Thank you so much to the people that contributed. Um, I hope, Everybody found it worth it, and um, I think it helps everyone to go through this <laughs> process of um, of looking at looking at what we've made, and you know, seeing what we want to do better next time, or or continue to do. Um, yeah, people are definitely interested in um, more, even more specifically about color. So that would yeah. Be that would be cool to do. I wanted to do, yes. yeah, I wanted to do, um, I wanted to do a dog, maybe just do a dog. Cause you know, I'm, I, that's what I do. And plus that's what a lot of people are doing and paint it and felt it. And I just wasn't sure. Um, cause I think there would be a lot to gain from mixing the colors both ways and seeing how one, medium translates to the other. Uh, so we'll have to figure that one out. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I, and the, there's so much more like to go into depth on more things and, um, in just in this conversation too. Um, but yeah, nice. this was nice, fun. Nice. This was fun for me. Yours was a much more positive critique than we had in university years ago, according to Jan Scott. <laughs> oh my gosh. I remember that. I only took uh, one or two art classes at my school and I didn't mind the critiques. It was just, sometimes it was hard. <laughs> sometimes it was hard. We had to make a sculpture out of one 
Oh, never mind. I don't think I... Okay, I now I have to tell you the story. We had to pick one thing and make a sculpture out of it. So it could be anything. You could pick newspaper. You could pick oranges. Like, so you had to take something and then your sculpture had to be made out of that. And I remember at the critique... <laughs> This is not really about critiquing. It was just a funny story. We were sitting around and the sculptures were sort of all around the room. Well, one of them was like a wall piece and she made hers out of chewing gum that she chewed. And so wow. this gum was on the wall. And as we were having the critique, it was like dripping. Ew, ew. <laughs> it was like newer. <laughs> This is college art class for you. <laughs> but yeah, so that was kind of funny. But um, I don't I don't remember any super damaging critiques. I remember as a kid, like not liking it when my dad told me what was wrong with my painting. <laughs> but um, but now we help each other a lot. And um, and I do wish that I took more classes because there is so much to learn and being self-taught is great and it lets you kind of do whatever, you know, and not worry. But, but when it comes to mixing colors, especially skin tones, I feel like I would like to learn more and that there's a lot to learn and I don't have that formal, um, that formal training. So, but we should just have fun and, you know, try new things and, enjoy the medium and um you know and and I, I really like this so i hope i hope you guys liked it and we can do it again you know i would love to do it again and we could talk more about i mean there's a lot of different techniques with needle felting like linda wanting to get something smooth or we're trying to get fur or um you know using the um the feather technique and doing some relief uh so there's there's a lot a lot to talk about. Very cool. Yeah. Everyone seemed to love it. Okay, good. Any other questions? Well, someone said not everyone is cut out to critique or teach. Neither is <laughs> easy to do. And you, I'm adding on to this, did a really good job. Oh, so. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. Good. Awesome. I loved uh, loved the pieces that are here. So uh, we will send them back next week. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everybody Very so fun. much i had a lot of fun today i was really looking forward to this and i had fun getting ready for it and um i look forward to to doing more and i'll let you know where i end up with things like if i work on the snow um on the snowy piece and um if the artists would also let us know where they ended up with things that would be awesome so we will see you after the holidays, I guess we're having yep. we're having Sheriffina Day on the 18th, um, from 10 to 3. The shop will be open, and I'll be here. Um, and but then other than that, we're gonna lay low until the new year. I mean, we'll be here shipping our little butts off, but uh, but in terms of live, uh, probably won't see you until next year. So I hope everyone has a really smooth and healthy and happy holiday and keep creating. Um, so, and thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon.